20 mm of sealing board there's the 20 mm of sealing board okay then there is an air gap of 200 mm then there is a fire bat this is the fire wall of 75 mm and then there's a 6 mm steel girder over it okay just to uh, prevent its fall and everything okay so uh, we have to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient for this okay so i will be taking an example but first of all let me actually go through the uh, basics very basics once again because if you are not going through basics if the basics are not clear then definitely you won't land up much ahead okay so let's find out the basics and then we will go forward to it okay so this was all about and i have already told you we have to take all the resistances in series just because everything is in series this then this then this this and the outside air so all the resistances are in series and we have discussed how to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient and overall heat transfer coefficient is equals to u is equals to 1 by r okay so let's go for this this was the blank table which we uh, which i showed to you okay now let's discuss how an engineer does it a professional and practical way to a theoretical concept of heat transfer through composite wall last time i have explained you the professional uh, means last time i explained you the theoretical concept of the heat transfer through composite wall basically it was including the uh, newton's law of convection as well as the fourier's law of conduction but before that let us brush up the basics okay so this will help you all to understand the theoretical concept this presentation will help you all to understand the theoretical concept of heat transfer through composite wall to understand the way the engineers solve the real life problems project of heat transfer through composite wall and that's the motive of today's presentation okay so let's go for the basics the fourier's law of conduction do you all remember the last slide the last the last presentation what we did we did the fourier's law of conduction that is the most important law for the conduction as far as conduction is concerned okay so the fourier's law of conduction is here on the slide the conduction rate equation okay so let me this is the main thing this is the heat okay this is the area so heat is directly proportional to the area okay heat is directly proportional to delta t by delta x and this is called the temperature gradient okay the temperature gradient is basically negative why it is negative because the heat has to come all the way from here crossing some material in between okay and then coming here so the material actually absorbs the energy from the heat so the temperature you will measure here will definitely be higher than the temperature you measure here okay so that's why you find a negative sign so the delta t the delta t by delta x dt by dx uh, is always negative okay so now what about this now if you remove if you remove this thing uh, see it is like minus dt by dx okay now if you remove this constant to proportionality you get something like this okay so this is what has been referred here so this k this k is thermal conductivity as i have discussed in the previous video okay so this thermal conductivity is actually the basic property of the material more the electron more the free electrons are present with the material better will be its thermal conductivity and lesser than the lesser will be the value means the insulator has got very less thermal conductivity whereas the metal has got the highest thermal conductivity okay so this was the conduction the theoretical approach now this is what i have discussed on uh, uh, in the previous video of uh, of this uh, series okay so it's like thermal resistance as i have already told you in an electrical circuit see uh, this is an electrical circuit okay this is an electrical circuit so if you see an electrical circuit it is like the resistance okay you have to establish potential difference you have to establish potential difference across the electrical circuit then across the resistance electrical resistance the current flows okay see it's written here it's i it's i is equals to delta v by r okay so if you talk about the electrical circuit in electrical circuit you have to apply potential difference across its ends and across the resistance then the charge in the form of current will actually flow so in thermal circuit 
in thermal circuit in place of current heat flows so i will be replaced by q okay in thermal circuit heat flows and there the current was flowing okay delta v means the potential difference is being replaced by delta t as we all know if we do not have delta t then definitely heat won't flow it has to be like higher level and in the lower level and if there is no higher and lower level definitely we know that heat won't flow okay then after that then if this is the thing then what's the thing now if we take about uh, the thermal circuit so the electrical resistance the electrical resistance is now being replaced by the thermal resistance okay so anything in format of i is equals to delta v by r in thermal circuit it will be q it will be q delta t by r so if we arrange everything in this format whatever is left we will get that value as the resistance so if we look at here this is the thermal conductivity okay this is the fourier's law of conduction so in fourier's law of conduction see k a t1 minus t2 that was the delta t and this was the thickness l okay so if it is done like this then we know if we arrange it in this format delta t by r then this is delta t this is q so l by k a remaining will be the resistance is it all clear so l by k a since we have put it in this format delta t by r is equals to q okay so delta t is there okay q is here so the remaining l by k a l by k a is the thermal resistance for the conduction okay now let's talk about for newton's law of cooling newton's law of convection okay newton's law of convection tells us this is the formula i have already discussed it in my previous video okay so newton's law of convection is h a delta t okay now just put it in this format once again just put it in this format once again so what will be the format then see this is the delta t this is the q so what's remaining the remaining is r convection so it is 1 by h a okay so if you put it in that format you will get the thermal resistance for convection this is the thermal resistance for conduction okay so this is how you do it this is a solid wall okay this has a surface temperature this has an ambient temperature this has a surface area this has a convective coefficient the air outside the wall has a convective coefficient h and then what do you do suppose uh, it it is only showing the convective because there is no k here there is no thickness here suppose it is in series then it will be like this okay so this is ts this is t infinity then this will be l by k, here it is x so it is x by k a and just uh, hold on okay so no problem it is let me just write it like this this is x by k a and this is 1 by h a okay so this is all about the thermal resistance concept so you need to remember the convection resistance is 1 by h a this is r convection and l by k a is the thermal resistance for conduction while putting this into this format that is q is equals to delta t by r and q is equals to delta t by r has come from here that is i is equals to delta v by r so this is called thermal analogy this is called electrical analogy to thermal resistance circuit okay so this is the same thing see what i was explaining it, uh, to you in the previous slide it's here see there is one wall here there is an insulation here so there are two conductivities here there is a temperature inside there is a temperature outside okay the heat is flowing per, per unit area okay so it has got one h here it has got one h here so look at it first of all the convection so the first particular thing will be here so the first resistance will be due to convection okay then the heat is coming across this okay so it is l1 by k1 it is just um, we have actually excluded the area just because it is heat is equals to watts per meter square and then the heat will be coming across this so this is l2 by k2 okay l2 is the thickness l1 is the thickness here 
and K1 and K2 is up there. Okay, and then this heat is coming out and it will be encountering the fluid outside which is in motion. It has got a convective coefficient. So, the next resistance will be 1 by H2. So, now as I have already told you in the beginning, uh, in, the previous, uh, in the previous video that if you, if you sum all the resistances, if you sum all the resistances, this is the resistance, okay. If you sum all the resistance and if you try to reciprocal this, okay, if you try to calculate the reciprocal this, then you will get, you will get a U value. The U value is overall heat transfer coefficient, the overall heat transfer coefficient whose unit is watts per meter square Kelvin, okay. So, and we all know it's the general formula, Q is equals to U delta T, actually it should be U A delta T, but since U is per meter square, so area has already been taken into consideration, okay. So, this was all about the basics, see, is the U value that is U is equals to 1 by R, 